Father, I pray that you touch us now and help us to rightly divide your word. Lord, I pray that you give us liberty to preach, and I pray that all those that hear the message will have liberty to listen to the Spirit of God. And I ask you, dear Father, that you use it for your honor and your glory. I pray that you'll be glorified, and I pray that your people will be edified to follow you and encouraged to live like you'd have us to live. And I pray that that sinner that's near as hell, wherever they are, get gloriously born again. And we thank you for it. And we ask you to add your blessing to the message. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Genesis chapter number 3, verse number 1. The Bible says, Now the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field, which the Lord God had made. And he said unto the woman, uh, Yea, hath God said, Ye shall not eat of every tree of the garden. And the woman said unto the serpent, We may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden, but of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, God hath said, Ye shall not eat of it, neither shall ye touch it, lest ye die. And the serpent said unto the woman, Ye shall not surely die, for God doth know that in the day ye eat thereof, then your eyes shall be opened, and ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. And when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, and that it was pleasant to the eyes, and to the tree to be desired to make one wise, she took of the fruit thereof, and did eat, and gave also to her husband with her, and he did eat. And their eyes were both open, and they knew they were naked, and they sewed fig leaves together and made themselves aprons. Verse 8, he said, And then and they heard the voice of the Lord walking in the garden in the cool of the day, and Adam and, the, and, and, Adam and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord again, amongst the trees of the garden. And they heard the voice of the Lord walking in the garden in the cool of the day. And Adam and his wife hid themselves uh, from the presence of the Lord God amongst the trees of the garden. And if God help us, we won't preach here at the mistake that Adam made here in Genesis chapter number 3. Now the Bible has many mistakes written in it and recorded in it. Not in the sense that the Bible is full of mistakes concerning the scripture itself, concerning the account itself, but God allows us to have glimpses throughout his word into the lives of these men and at the mistakes that they made so we might learn from them. You have the mistake of Samson, the mistakes of David, the mistakes of Jacob, and so many mistakes throughout the word of God that we can learn from. The Bible tells us in Proverbs chapter 21 verse 11 he said when the scorner is uh, punished the simple is made wise and the wise is instructed he receiveth knowledge and that's something that was carried out throughout the word of God that as people sinned against God the punishment and the wrath of God was upon them and it showed them that you and I it shows you and I that we're supposed to live right before God or suffer the consequences and so these people throughout the word of God we can learn from. You remember when the Bible teaches us how that Korah the ground opened up because he stood against the men of God and he said that he was going to be the leader of God's people and the ground opened up and swallowed Korah and all his leaders and the rest of the people of God said we're going to follow God and we're going to listen to him and listen to Moses lest the ground open up and swallow us up also. The Bible tells us again in the word of God and I think it's 2 Corinthians how that we're supposed to learn from from those things that were examples for you and I. And he talks about the fiery serpents because they murmured and complained how that God sent fiery serpents among the people of God and they bit men that they might die. And that is to be an example to you and I that we're not supposed to murmur and we do all things without murmuring. And we're supposed to live for God and follow Him. So let's look at the mistakes here that Adam made. I will look at a few things that have got to help us. First thing I want to notice is the first mistake was that he was watching Eve when he should have been warning her. He was watching her while he should have been warning her. Look what the word of God says. And said and gave all 
also it said when she saw this one that desired uh, to make one wise, she took the fruit thereof. Verse number six, and did eat and gave also to her husband with her, and he did eat. Said it gave to her husband that was with her. So uh, it blows my mind that through this entire time, Adam is with her. Adam is with her when the serpent begins to speak to Eve. Adam is with her whenever the serpent begins to question the word of God. And Adam is with her whenever she reaches out and grabs of the fruit of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil and takes part of it. Adam is there the entire time watching what's going on. And he should have been warning them and telling them about the word of God. The Bible tells us in 2 Corinthians chapter number 5 and verse number 9, he said, Wherefore we labor and whether uh, wherefore we labor uh, that whether present or absent we may be accepted of him for we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ that every man may receive the things done in his body according to that he hath done whether it be good or bad knowing therefore the terror of the Lord we persuade men but we are made manifest in the God and I trust also are manifest in your conscience he said knowing therefore the terror of the Lord we persuade men and it's amazing to me I find myself sometimes many times I find myself watching a situation unfold and holding my tongue and not warning them about the troubles at hand. I'm telling you, you and I as the people of God are to be ashamed of ourselves for so many times watching something unfold and forgetting and failing to warn them of the troubles to come. The Bible tells us in Isaiah 58 verse 1, cry aloud, spare not, lift up your voice like a trumpet and show my people their transgressions and the, uh, and, and the house of Jacob their sins. We're supposed to tell them. The Bible tells us about Ezekiel. He said, I've set you up as a watchman upon the wall. And if you see the enemy come, you're to cry aloud. You're to cry out and warn them about the enemy. And it said, if those people hear the warning and do not flee, do not seek shelter, do not prepare. He said, then your blood, and you've delivered your soul, and their blood should not be required at your hand. But he said, if you hold your peace and you do not warn them about the enemy in the midnight hour uh, coming to devour them and coming to destroy them if you don't warn them you don't tell them at the trouble of hand he said then will their blood be required of your hands and I think about that I think about how you think of people how that God has blessed them and God has used them and you think of how that so many things have been laid to their account imagine being at like, uh, like a, a Stephen who was stoned and having the interest drawn off of Paul's conversion. All them people, all them people that worship God now and have looked to the grace of God for salvation because Paul had worked and Paul had labored and he was converted because Stephen was faithful to the end, I suppose. And I guess that he was converted. It troubled him that, that Stephen was murdered there and they drew interest. Stephen drew interest off of Paul, I like to think and I like to think that that's the reason why the judgment is after the rapture because we do not yet know what is going to take place and what God will do with those works that we have done and we will give an account for them whether they be good or bad and if that same truth be held uh, to those that have done wicked and those that have done wrong just think of Adam the blood that would be required of Adam's hand because he did not warn Eve even because he did not tell her there's an entire race dying in their sin. There's an entire race of people that are dying, going to hell because they have not uh, heard the gospel and because sin is in their life and they have took and rejected God. That would not have happened if Adam would have stood up and warned Eve. That's a terrible thought. If there's two people, if there's two people, I, I dare not want to be at the judgment. One of them would be uh, Judas. And I believe Judas is a lost man. I believe Judas died and went to hell, went to his own place. I do not find anywhere in the word of God that he got repentance. 
or when he got saved, I find we repented. He was sorrowful. But I do not find anywhere where he ever asked for forgiveness, where he ever took and, and got gloriously saved, but he went to his own place, the Bible tells us. I'd hate to be Judas, the Bible tells us. And it's better for that man that he never was born. But then also, I'd hate to be Adam. I'd hate to be Adam. To be a perfect man in a perfect world, in a perfect land, and sin against God, knowing what was going to happen, and knowing the repercussion of his sin, and knowing that death would come to him and his family, watching when he should have been warning. I find that he was watching when he should have been warning, but not only that, but also he was listening when he should have been leading. He was listening when he should have been leading. The Bible said in verse number 6, it said, And gave also to her husband, and he did eat. She gave also to her husband. She instructed him, gave him uh, the fruit and instructed him upon eating the fruit. He did not deceive her. The Bible tells us she did not deceive him. The Bible tells us in 1 Timothy 2 uh, verse number 11. He said, let the women learn in subjection. Uh, learn in silence with all subjection. But I suffer not a woman to teach nor to usurp authority over the man but to be silent. For Adam was first formed, then Eve. And Adam was not deceived, but the woman being deceived uh, was in the transgression. The woman being deceived. Adam was not deceived, but the woman was deceived. I find Adam, he was listening when he should have been leading. You never find where Adam was deceived, but he was not deceived. He knew better. He got the word from God himself, and he knew what he should have done. And he knew what should have happened. But he instead said, I live by and listened and became a partaker in what he knew was to be sin. You and I are not much better off most of the time. The Bible tells us in Matthew chapter number 5, He said, Let your lights so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. You and I know, and you and I know what's right, but we sin against God and we jump headlong into the sin and we choose rather to obey our own lust and our own flesh rather than the will of a holy God. And because of that, people sin against God, live in sin, continue to go contrary. We're supposed to lead them to Christ. We're supposed to lead them in the way to go. Not listen to them. Not listen to their arguments. Not allow them to convince us that this lifestyle or that sin is alright. Not to listen to them, but we're to lead them in the way that they should go. The Bible teaches us not only that he was watching when he should have been warning, listening when he should have been leading, but I want to say thirdly, he was reacting when he should have been remembering. He was reacting when he should have been remembering. Look at what happened in verse 6. It said, And gave also to her husband, and he did eat, and he did eat. He gave it to her, and then her husband that was with her, he should have been warning her, but instead he was watching idly by. And he should have been leading her, but instead he listened to her and took of the fruit and said, and did he, he reacted when he should have remembered. He should have remembered how God said that you should not eat of that tree lest you surely die in the day that you eat thereof. He should have been listening. He should have been remembering. He should have remembered what God had told him instead of just reacting. And most of us, when we sin against God, it's because we've not took time and remembered the precious things of God and not remembered the price that was given for you and I and not remembered the promises that's written in the Word of God. And we've not remembered the past that He saved us out of. But we just react on the present we just react in that present moment instead of remembering those things that we know. He just reacted. The Bible tells us in Psalms 119.11, He said, Thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against thee. We need to remember what God had said and what God had showed us. Looking at the mistake of Adam, he reacted when he should have remembered. But lastly, I want to say this. Because of that, 
Because he was watching when he should have been warning. And because he was listening when he should have been leading. And because he was reacting when he should have been remembering. He ended up weeping when he should have been walking. He wound up weeping over his sin and weeping over him being cast out of the garden when he should have been walking with God. He said he came the voice of God walking in the garden in the cool of the day and Adam and his wife hid themselves from the presence of God among the trees of the garden. He should have been walking with God but because he would sinned against God he was weeping instead of walking. We can walk with God. The Bible tells us how that Enoch walked with God. And we find out why he walked with God in Hebrews 11. It's because he had this testimony that he pleased God. The Bible tells us in Psalm 66, he said, If I regard iniquity in my heart, the Lord will not hear me. The Lord will not hear me. You and I as the people of God can learn from this mistake of Adam. We need to be warning instead of watching. We need to be leading instead of listening to this world. We should be leading them to Christ. And we should remember the precious words of God instead of reacting to the lust that's within our heart and within our flesh. And if we do that, we could walk with God instead of weeping bitterly. I think so many times of Peter how he went out weeping bitterly. And he weeped bitterly because he forsook the precious Son of God. And he took and did what was easy. It is not, it's a simple thing living for God. You just have to do what he said. You just have to be obedient. But that does not mean it's an easy thing. Just because it's simple does not mean it's easy. And sometimes it seems that the time to be easier to live in sin and go with the flow and go with the crowd. And there's less opposition. There's less trouble. Just go with the way this rest of this world is going and enjoy your flesh. Quit struggling and fighting. But instead, instead, you and I realize as the people of God with the new nature of Christ within us, we'll end up working and it'll cost us more to live in sin than it ever did to live for God. It'll cost you things living for God. But the Bible tells us, Paul said, I reckon that the present suffering of this life is not worthy to be compared with the glories that shall be revealed in us. The word reckon means to do the math. It's an accounting term for doing the math or balancing the books. And he said, I reckon I figured it up. I did the homework. And it's better to suffer in this life and live for Christ and to have glories revealed in us for him. Lord, I pray that you touch it now. I pray that you help this message be a blessing to someone and help to someone. I ask you, dear God, that you'll guide us and direct us in every aspect of our life. I pray for our country. I pray for our president, Donald Trump. I pray that you'll save him as he's lost. And Lord, if he's saved, I pray that you'll direct him and use him for your will. Lord, I thank you for President Trump. Lord, I sure do thank you for my president. Lord, I thank you for my country. I'm thankful that I was born in America. Lord, and I thank you for what she stood with. And I thank you, Lord, that she stood with Israel. And Lord, I thank you for what you're going to do with us. And Lord, I pray that you'll use us all for your honor and your glory. Most of all, dear God, I pray that you'll save that sinner nearest hell. And we thank you for it. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Teach me, oh Lord, to preach like John.